So I have an interesting design technique for you this week, and what's interesting about this is that it's done using one simple layer style, but it's being applied to several different layers, each one resulting in a different effect. But it's still the same layer style, and it's really, really cool. So let's begin by building what's gonna be our background element, which is this image here, and you probably recognize this. This is the Vitruvian Man by Leonardo da Vinci. We've seen this all over the place lately. So, what I want to do first is actually remove the color information from this because um, all I'm really interested in is the outlines, the outlines of this image and the lettering here. So I'm going to begin by removing the color information. I'm just going to press Shift Command U, to be Shift Control U on a PC. Then we get a basic cleaned up black and white version of it. Well, I'm going to go ahead and press Command or Control A. I'm going to then press Command or Control C. Then we'll copy the entire image to the clipboard. I'm going to go ahead and click on the channels palette, and I'm going to create a new blank alpha channel. I'm just going to press Command or Control V, and it will paste that image into the alpha channel. So now, I want to gener generate a selection of the outlines and the lettering, and in inside an alpha channel, anything that's white is going to be 100% selected. Anything black is going to be unselected, and anything partially gray is going to be partially selected. So. I need to go ahead and invert the values of this image. So I'm going to press Command or Control I, and it will invert it. Now, a lot of this area is still very light and very gray, and I really just want the outlines for the most part. So I'm going to bring up my levels. I'm going to press Command or Control L. I'm going to sample. I'm going to grab the black eyedropper here, and just right up next to the head here, just this kind of dark gray area, I'm just going to click once. And it's going to give me a lot of the black area that I need right here. And I can al also click and add areas to this. If I click over here, it will remove a good portion of that area as well. So once that's done and everything, I think everything looks good, I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And I'm going to work on this a little bit more. So got rid of a lot of the black area or, or those gray, dark, really dark gray areas, but I need to get rid of a little bit more. So this time I'm going to paint those areas in. So with my brush tool, painting with black, I'm just going to go in here and remove some of these areas. Now when I'm getting close to some areas that I want to remain white, I'm going to make sure that my brush is set to overlay because this will only brush away areas that you initially click. So if I initially click in a dark black area, it's only going to paint away those same values. And conversely, if I set my brush to white and click once in a white area and just continue to paint without lifting my mouse, it's only going to paint in those similar tone areas. You can see the white areas are getting considerably brighter right here in the lettering as well. Because I haven't released my mouse yet. I click that once inside that head area and I keep brushing and it's only going to affect areas that are lighter, as light or lighter than that white that I initially clicked. So, I think that looks like it might be pretty good. So, Channel's all set in place. I'm going to go ahead and load this as a selection. I'm just going to hold down my Command or Control key and just click directly on that alpha channel icon. You can see it's loaded as a selection. Let's reactivate our composite channels, go back into layers, and create a new blank layer. And I'm just going to fill that selection with white. And since white is set as my foreground color, I'm just going to press Option Delete. That would be Alt Backspace on a PC. So that area is filled with white. Well, I'm going to go ahead and create a new document that I'm going to actually build the design in. And you can see right here, it's just a very small 7 by 5 and a quarter at 100. You want to be wary of that because if you're going to try this effect on a much higher res file, the settings for the layer styles and such might be a little bit different. So let's go back into this file here, and I'm just going to hold down my Shift key. I'm going to drag and drop that area, or that filled area, over to my working document. And let's zoom out here. I'm going to press Command or Control T to bring up Free Transform. And let's just scale this image in so it fits within our frame there. We'll zoom back in. And I'll just press Enter. So there's that effect as my background. It looks okay. It's just, you know, kind of white and looks kind of bleh. But we're going to enhance that a little bit more with a simple layer style. I'm going to double click on the layer to bring up the layer styles options. And we're going to activate Outer Glow. And of course, by default, it's going to use that off-white, yellow, nasty-ish color. Now, of course, here's where you can have a little bit of artistic license. I'm going to actually go with a blue color, just because it has a little bit more dramatic feel to it. And I'm going to bring that opacity all the way up to 100, and you can see it gives a little bit more glow. 
Now down here in the elements uh, area, I'm going to increase the size not too much. I'm going to go with about 10 pixels. Because if I go way too high, you can see that the effect just gets just, just gets lost. I want it to be a very subtle glow. We'll keep it at about 10. Now if you wanted to, you could set the spread to a very low number just to increase that. And you can see if I go too high, it just makes it look ridiculous. But if I go with like 1, it's not quite as bad. So, so there's a before and after. I mean, you can see that that one layer style, look at the difference it makes. It makes it that much more interesting. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. So... We've got that background, everything's created. Let's duplicate this layer. And it's gonna enhance that effect a little bit more. And if you like that enhance a little, look a little bit, go ahead and keep it. But I need a duplicate to actually apply an effect to. So I'm actually gonna make an, a third. I really like the way these two layers interact and give me a really much brighter glow. But I'm gonna go ahead and make a third duplicate. And this time I'm gonna run a filter on it. I'm gonna go under filter, go to blur, radial blur. And we're going to set the amount to 100 and the blur method to zoom so we get a nice blurring zoom effect. But if you go in here in the blur center, you can actually move this target around and pinpoint where you want the blur to center at, you know, where the center point, where it's, where it's converging to. And I actually want it to converge right around the head area here, so which I can assume, and this is a drawback, it doesn't have a live preview, you just kind of got to guess at it. I'm just going to position it right about there. We'll click OK and see what we got. So it actually looks pretty good. So I'm going to enhance that effect a little bit more by pressing Command or Control F, and it reapplies the same filter. In fact, I'll do that a couple times. And you can see it's giving me a really cool, you know, just kind of a really interesting light effect. And I can intensify that just like I did earlier by duplicating the layer. You can see how really cool that looks. So let's take it a bit further. I'm going to go over here and put some text in. And I'm just going to click once, and we'll just put, type in Da Vinci. And let's go in here. We'll zoom out. And I'm going to press Command and Control T, and we'll just scale this text in a little bit. And I'm holding down Shift Option, that would be Shift Alt, and it will scale it proportionately from the center area. And we'll just kind of put that right about there. I press Enter, and I can go and center it by pressing Command or Control A, and then just clicking this middle icon here. There we have it. So now, as I mentioned, we're going to be applying the layer style, the same layer style to all the layers. So all I got to do here is over in my layers panel, here's the effect the effect icon on here. All I got to do is to apply it to this layer. If you hold down the option key or the alt key on a PC and click and drag that FX icon to the layer above it, it will copy that layer style right to that layer. There is the effect. All looks good. So it's a quick and easy way of copying layer styles to other layers. You can even do this between documents. If you've got an active document on one file, you can drag and drop a layer style and it will apply it to it. So let's have one last element here. I'm going to go and create a new blank layer and we're going to get our gradient tool painting with white as the foreground using the foreground to transparent gradient, which is the second one right here, and set the mode of the, the gradient tool to dissolve, which is the second item right here. Then, from the middle of the eye here, I'm just going to hold down my shift key and just draw a gradient out just like that. And again, it is from the last time I used it, but just make sure you're using the radial gradient, not the linear, so it gives you a rounded gradient there. And, as we did before, let's Option or Alt key and drag that effect icon onto there. It applies that glow. I'm going to go into the filter menu and go to Blur, Motion Blur, and it will give me a really cool motion blur effect. I'm going with the angle at zero, so it's left to right, and then a distance of 100, so it gives me that little bit of noise in there. Click OK. I'm going to press Command or Control T, and I'm just going to scale that. I'm going to hold down my Option key, that would be the Alt key, and just scale this down so it's a little bit more in with the size of the text. Press Enter, and there you have it. Pretty cool Da Vinci. Oh, zoomed out. Really cool Da Vinci effect all created from just a few graphics and all with one layer style. And you can see that layer style applied to each individual layer results in a very different effect because of the pixels it's being applied to.